Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today I want to talk about Proverbs 15. Um, I've selected a few verses that have really stuck out to me, and I want to comment on a few of those. But Proverbs is probably the most intensely practical book in the Old Testament because it teaches skillful living in the multiple aspects of everyday life. Its specific precepts include instruction on wisdom and folly, the righteous and the wicked, the tongue, pride and humility, justice and vengeance, the family, laziness and work, poverty and wealth, friends and neighbors, love and lust, anger and strife, masters and servants in life and death. Proverbs touches upon every facet of human relationships, and its principles transcends the bounds of time and culture. The word proverb means to be like. Thus, Proverbs is a book of comparisons between common, concrete images in life's most profound truths. So the first verse that stuck out to me in Proverbs chapter 15 is verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Second Chronicles 16 verse 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth, that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. You have acted foolishly in this. Indeed, from now on, you will surely have wars. 1 Peter 3 verse 12 speaks on this. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears attend to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. The second verse that stuck out to me in Proverbs chapter 15 is verse 6. In the house of the righteous there is much treasure, but in the revenue of the wicked is trouble. We see a similar contrast in Isaiah chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. Say to the righteous that it will go well with him, for they will eat the fruit of their actions. Woe to the wicked, it will go badly with him, for what he deserves will be done to him. As Solomon said, there is one fate for the righteous and for the wicked. As Jeremiah Burroughs said, quote, Christian contentment is that sweet, inward, quiet, gracious frame of spirit which freely submits to and delights in God's wise and fatherly disposal in every condition. Sinclair Ferguson adds that, quote, contentment is the direct fruit of having no higher ambition than to belong to the Lord at his disposal. 1 Timothy 6.6 6. So the wicked man is troubled by a sense of being out of harmony with all that is holy and just and true in the universe of God and with a foreboding of future retribution. The wealth of the Spirit is so much more than material wealth as the Spirit is so much more than the body. It is wealth to have a conscience purged from dead works to serve the living God, Hebrews 9.14, and to lay up treasure without being thus rich towards God, Luke 12.21, is only to spend money for that which is not bread and labor for that which satisfies not. The next verse that stuck out to me is Proverbs 15, verse 11. Hell and destruction are before the Lord, so how much more the hearts of the sons of men. Shiloh and destruction lie open before Jehovah. The idea is that the omniscient God is fully aware of these two places. How interesting that they are paralleled with men's hearts. Is there a hint of a reminder that the heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick? Who can understand it? Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Garland comments on the word abaddon, a transliteration of the related Hebrew term. 
the Hebrew term abaddon is derived from a meaning to perish, become lost, or be ruined. It is translated by destruction and associated with Shiloh, where it denotes a place which is seen by the omnipresence and omniscience of God. Abaddon is personified along with death, as having heard of the fame of elusive wisdom, Job 28 verse 22. It is said to be the destination of a consuming fire, Job 31 verse 12, and is associated with the grave, but different from it. It is said that hell or Shiloh and Abaddon destruction are never full, Proverbs 27 verse 20. Proverbs 15 verse 16 says this, Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. In verse 16, the fear of the Lord brings more satisfaction than wealth with discontentment. Jesus clearly taught that people's lives are not measured by their possessions, Luke 12 verse 15. Life is not about money, it's about relationships. Loving God and loving others are the two most important aspects of life on earth. Solomon offers two proverbs about the value of relationships. First, a relationship with the Lord, and second, a relationship with the most important people in the life of their families. Warren Worsby adds that, quote, If we truly fear the Lord, we acknowledge from our hearts that He's the Creator, we're the creatures. He's the Father, we're His children. He's the Master, we're the servants. It means to respect God for who He is, to listen carefully to what He says, and to obey His word, knowing that our disobedience displeases Him, breaks our fellowship with Him, and invites His chastening. It's not the servile fear of the slave before the master, but the reverential and respectful fear of the child before the parent. Children fear not only because their parents can hurt them, but also because they can hurt their parents. And lastly, verse 24 of Proverbs 15 says, The way of life winds upward for the wise, that he may turn away from hell below. Our life is often described in Scripture as a walk on a path or a way. We see the path of the upright is characterized as a highway in Proverbs 15 verse 19. In a sense, the entire book of Proverbs presents the truth that there are only two paths, one leading to life and the other leading to destruction. This proverb escalates the rewards of righteousness from present joy to everlasting life in relationship with the Lord. Leads, or literally is, upward as an antithesis to downward in connection with the grave implies eternal life above and beyond the grave. To say Proverbs does not allude to immortality is to disregard passages like Proverbs 14 verse 32, which says, The wicked is thrust down by his wrongdoing, but the righteous has a refuge when he dies. In Proverbs 12 verse 28, it says, In the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. And Proverbs 10 16 says, The wages of the righteous is life, the income of the wicked is punishment. God bless.